Now, at the age of 12, Richard Knott fell in love with Maisie, and so began a great romance. But Maisie was no ordinary love. She was, in fact, a train. And as Christine walked and discovered, Maisie railroaded Richard into a love affair that managed to combine steam with green. Alfred Austin, the poet laureate 100 years ago, said a very wise thing. He said, show me your garden and I will tell you what you are. So looking around this garden in Dorset, he might say this is the great train shrubbery. This person is obviously quite mad about railways. Richard Knott got his first engine at the tender age of 12. From then on, well, it was full steam ahead. Ever since I can remember, I've always loved the smell of steam. The smell of hot oil. It's wonderful. It's better than perfume. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't persuaded my wife to wear any yet. You haven't. <laughs> when you light the match for the first piece of wood until you've got a full head of steam and can move off, that's a magical period to me. I still get a buzz from lighting that first match. Oh. Planning a new garden from scratch always takes time, but Richard has spent over 20 years turning his dream garden into reality. So how much land have you got, Richard? Uh, in total, 850 feet. I suppose you could describe it as an oval uh, with a figure of eight in the middle of it. Right. All joined up. <laughs> <laughs> So who built these tunnels and things? Uh, well, there was a gang of about half a dozen of us involved from the outset. We dug for about two hours with hand tools and then decided that we weren't getting anywhere, really. It took a whole year with a mechanical digger just to remove the soil. Now, what about all these signals then? I mean, it's great. I keep seeing lights flash on and off, signals going up and down. Well, the signals are all controlled by a computer, so that we don't need anybody in the signal box. Yeah. Uh, however, they can be controlled manually, if you so wish. Oh, right. Can I have a go? You can certainly have a go, yes. That's terrific. Right, Christine, I'm going to get you to start a train from the station. Right. Now, in order to do this, you need to pull your signal and a point. Right. So you've got to find 14. Right, that's that one. And pull that towards you. And then lever number six, which is the signal. All right. And now, as you can see, the locomotive has a green light. Right. And is leaving the station. There it goes. And off you go smoothly. Yep. On its maiden voyage with maiden me in control. Voyage, absolutely. <laughs> Most gardens are shared and enjoyed by the people who live together in the house. Richard's wife, Connie, must be a very patient woman. <laughs> Has this always been Richard's life? As long as I've known him, which is 36 years this month, yes, it has. And how do you put up with it? Well, if you don't put up with it, you never see them. So it's, you know, you have to join them. Lots of people say to me, do you ever drive the engine? And I just turn around and say, no, I've wet my nails. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays are steaming days in the garden. It's when Richard's mates come round, because it does take a team to run this railway. Unlike the prettiest gardens, Richard opens four times a year for charity and gives rides round the shrubbery. It's great fun as a garden, but there's one problem that you don't get with conventional planting. What to do if you want to move? Both Connie and I have already agreed that we will go out of this house in our little wooden boxes. Mm. On the back of a train? Uh, preferably, yes. It's not your normal garden, but I think it's fantastic that they've used trees and shrubs to create a realistic atmosphere of a full-blown railway line. And it's now my time to have a go. 